Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. The gas weight conundrum. You know, I think the gravity deniers have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Uh, what's your answer for this? You know, obviously a full scuba tank weighs more than an empty scuba tank. An empty tank weighs about 16 kilograms, but the same tank when it's filled with compressed air, weighs about 19 and a half kilograms. We see that same thing with acetylene or oxygen or helium or any other single gas. Now we know that gas molecules move around randomly in all directions and they bounce off surfaces. And if we put them inside a sealed container, they bounce off all of the walls of the container. But when those gas molecules hit the wall, their momentum changes. And the rate of change of momentum produces a force, and that force per unit area is what we call gas pressure. Wait a minute. If the gas molecules are bouncing randomly off all the internal surfaces, where does the weight come from? You know, you can't explain this with ad hoc pseudoscience like relative density disequilibrium. The gas in a tank has to be exerting more force on the bottom of the tank than it exerts on the top of the tank or there would be no difference in the weight of a full tank and an empty tank, now would there? This is really pretty simple. If we take a typical gas molecule which has just collided with the top of the container. It would have exerted an average force on the top, which is equal to its mass times its velocity in the vertical direction, divided by the length of time it spent traveling from the bottom of the tank to the top of the tank. But now, in the reverse direction, on its way down, it's going to be subject to the acceleration of gravity. And when it collides with the bottom of the tank, again reversing its momentum, the average force on the bottom is the same as the force on the top plus its mass times the acceleration of gravity. And it's that difference in average force at the top and the bottom of the tank that accounts for the weight of the gas. So when we multiply the gravitational acceleration, times the mass of the gas in a sealed cylinder, and we can figure out what that mass is from the ideal gas laws by knowing the pressure, the volume, and the temperature, we get the weight of the gas. And the actual weight of that gas that we measure matches our prediction perfectly. Now be careful when you tell this to a gravity denier because you'll probably get this reaction. Oh, and by the way, they throw food at you sometimes, too. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And we'll see you guys on the next one.